Hello, I'm Tim Daniels from lapsoftheshutter.com and in this video we'll be looking at how to blend multiple exposures taken over sunset and blue hour to create this. This is a really nice technique to use for cities where you can blend all of the city lights into the sunset. So let's take a look at the photos we want to blend. I set up my tripod in Yokohama, Japan and kept it there for over an hour, taking photos as the light changed. If you're serious about this kind of photography, you do need to be happy to stay in one place for a long time without moving your camera, but I think the results are worth it. Here's all the photos that I took that evening, from about 20 past 5 to about 20 past 6. Of those, I've cut it down to about 5 exposures that I want to use, which I've already processed using the totally free Lightroom Develop system, available from lapseoftheshutter.com. I go into more detail on how to use Lightroom effectively in some of my other videos. We'll skip it this time as this video is about how to blend these exposures together. After loading the five photos into Photoshop, we can quickly go through them and see the sun setting and blue hour taking hold. There's a handy clock on the ferris wheel so you can keep track of which photo was taken when. The first is from 5.24, the last from 6.03, so not a large time frame, but one in which the scene changes markedly. I'm going to set one of the later photos from 6pm as the base layer that we'll blend the other exposures into. This is a nice blue hour photo with plenty of city lights and a not too dark sky. It looks good on its own, but if we can simply blend the sunset into the sky from the previous photos, we should be able to make something even more special. Let's start by fixing the ferris wheel. In the base exposure, it's overexposed and not a particularly attractive colour due to the photo being a long exposure. In reality, the ferris wheel was constantly changing colour in waves. I push the ISO up and open the aperture on the camera to get a quick shot of it with all the different colours intact. This has captured the colours, but in a noisy, unsharp photo. In this case, none of that matters, as all I'm going to do is to add a layer mask, fill it with black so none of that photo shows through, then paint the ferris wheel back in by hand using a large, soft brush, building up layer on layer, so that the only part of that high ISO blurry photo that shows into our final version is the ferris wheel, and of course its reflection in the water. There's the before and the after. A minor but worthwhile change. Now we can get into the real blending, and for that we're going to use modified luminosity masks. If you haven't watched the video on five ways to blend multiple exposures, or seen the article with the same name, you might want to check that out first at lapseoftheshutter.com. This technique uses concepts introduced in that video and tutorial. We are going to build the blend up one photo at a time. It doesn't really matter which photo you start with, but it generally helps to begin with a photo that most closely resembles your base exposure. In this case, a blue hour photo. So we'll start with this one. Taken nearly 15 minutes earlier when the street lights were just starting to come on. There's a red glow on the horizon in the water that we want to keep and blend into our base exposure. So how can we select this red sky? Essentially, the area we want is both bright and red, so the easiest way to select it is with the luminosity mask intersected with the red channel. This is much easier to do than it sounds. First, go to the Channels tab and control click on the RGB thumbnail. This creates your luminosity mask. That is, the brightest pixels in your photo are now selected. Then, you can filter this selection to contain only the most red pixels, by holding down Ctrl Alt Shift and clicking on the red channel thumbnail. Now your selection consists of the brightest red pixels in your photo, in other words, the sunset. Go back to the Layers tab and click the symbol to add a layer mask, and the selection will automatically be applied to the layer mask. Here it is. You can see that the selection is more complex than just the area of red clouds, which will give us a much better and more subtle blend. You can also modify this mask by hand, of course, by taking the paintbrush and painting out any areas that you don't want blended. In this case, we don't want any of the ferris wheel from this exposure, so I'll paint over it black. So if we have a quick before and after, 
you can see a subtle sunset has been added to the sky, and to the reflection of the sky in the water. Also, some texture has been added to the clouds. Let's repeat that process with the earlier sunset shot, taken just as the sun passed the horizon. Again, we go to the Channels tab, Control click on the RGB thumbnail, Control alt shift click on the red channel to filter the luminosity mask to only the brightest red pixels. Going back to the Layers tab, we can add a layer mask and see the results. Again, we can use the paintbrush to paint out the ferris wheel, and I'll also paint out some areas of the sky that haven't blended too well. And that's the before and after. We are building up the sunset slowly in layers, with just one more to go to complete the effect. Our final photo contains the brightest part of the sunset. This will need to be blended carefully so it doesn't overpower the rest of the blend. We won't use luminosity for this selection, but will instead make a selection based entirely on the amount of red. If you go to the channel tab and control click on the red thumbnail, this produces a selection of only the most saturated red pixels. This has nothing to do with brightness or luminosity, only red saturation. This has produced a much wider selection than if we combined it with a luminosity mask as we did before. And on its own, it's too overpowering. I'll paint some of this out with a paintbrush, then we can use blending modes to soften the effect. Changing the blending mode to soft light has made a big difference, but it's still a little powerful for me, so I'll also reduce the opacity of the layer to around 80%. Now let's see this layers before and after. That's the blend complete, so let's see again the entire before and after for the photo. And I'll also zoom into the area of the sunset, so that you can see how well the blend fits. This is a powerful way of adding dynamism to an otherwise flat blue hour and sunset photo. All you need to do it successfully is several photos taken over sunset and blue hour from the same location. You'll need a tripod for this, and you probably need to stay in one place for 45 minutes to one hour, avoiding the temptation to move your camera. So make sure you are happy with your composition before you start. Although the blend for this photo is now complete, I would still run this photo through my Landscapes Masterclass workflow. If you want to take a look at what that involves, it's freely available as both a, both a text and video tutorial at lapsoftheshutter.com, where you can also find the Lightroom Develop system Photoshop Color Control Action Pack and Photoshop Landscape Color Grades, also all available for free download.